Are they raising children in Israel as anti-Islamic? Do Jews see other people as second-class citizens? Rockets fired and fired and it stopped after a while. People got out of their shelters and everyone ran home. You would not believe how they ran, as if Allah had blown the trumpet. You shall not kill your brother in religion, but you can kill a Muslim. His blood is your right. This is how they drill into one's subconscious. Did you have any doubts before accepting Islam? Before I accepted Islam, I had no religion in mind. Let me put it this way. It might be a little funny, but whenever I left my house, I was like, count these numbers. I made up a ritual. Press number seven, you know, various rituals. I had taken other gods. The nature of a man needs a god, a mentor. Since I didn't know what Islam was, I wanted to protect myself in some way. One recited Ayat al-Kursi and I counted the number of verses from time to time. I remember something like that. I have a fuzzy memory. I wasn't interested in religion that much. I mean, I was in college, 20, 21 years old. We drove home in my father's car. We were in Azerbaijan then. There was a man on the radio, an imam named Khomeini. He was talking about something. I asked, Dad, is this a prophet? My father laughed and said, what prophet? He can't even be the shadow of him. He's not a prophet. He's like an imam or something. I thought to myself then, what is a prophet? How could one be a prophet? I left it there. I didn't look for an answer. I mean, I forgot. But I never forgot it completely at the same time. When I asked that question again when I was 26, I was in the same place. I didn't have anything related to any religion in my life. Neither Judaism nor Christianity. I'd say I'm Jewish, if that's any good to me. I would say, Alhamdulillah, I am a Muslim. But I knew nothing about Islam except, Alhamdulillah, I am a Muslim. What did you feel when you became a Muslim after reciting the Shahada? Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. We saw that 80% of our audience, including this video, are not subscribed to our channel. As you know, we are a non-profit organization and advertisements are disabled on our videos. So the only reason we are asking for this is to spread the truth. It may seem like a small act, but inshallah, it may be a means of guidance for many people. Now let's click the subscribe button and let's together walk towards eternity. What did you feel when you became a Muslim after reciting the Shahada? I was overwhelmed with emotion. Before reciting the Shahada, I had already researched religion and became a Muslim. I mean, nobody asked me to recite the Shahada. I can tell you this. Nobody made me say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abdahu wa rasuluhu. When I studied religion, it turned out I recited the Shahada. When I actually recited the Shahada, I recited it knowing what it meant. Because I had all the knowledge as the foundation for my faith. I had knowledge about forbidden things. Siyar, basics of faith and worshipping, Quran, Tafsir, that knowledge. I didn't acquire this knowledge in years. I learned it in six to seven months of intensive interest and research. When I recited the Shahada, since I had laid the foundation before, I was happy and rejoiced. Do Jews see other people as inferior? The Zionists see it that way. This is something mostly related to Zionism. They say, any person following any religion other than Judaism, they are created to serve us. To kill them, to oppress them, is a good deed for us and even rewarding. Let me give you an example. Two years ago, there was a massacre on Eid al-Fitr in Gaza, Israel, where Palestinians were killed. There was an Israeli on a TV channel who is known as a right-wing extremist. Killing Muslims, Palestinian Muslims is not wrong. There is no sin for us. We need to exterminate them now so they don't give us any trouble tomorrow. If we do this now, we will receive rewards, not sins. Even the TV anchor who asked about this was surprised. One who said this was a Zionist. When did you become a Muslim? How did you decide to become a Muslim? I had a hard time physically and spiritually. Let's call this a safe haven. I couldn't find it in haram things. Haram didn't provide me with anything. My safe haven is the one thing that satisfied my soul, that satisfied me completely. That thing was Islam. I had a period when I was like in a trial, and the trial was not proceeding well. I told myself, I listen to songs every day and many other things. Let's listen to Turkish Islamic scholar for once. Let's see what he has to say. That's how I came across Islam. How was the Prophet? I learned Islam by listening to these talks about siyar, about the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him. That's how I learned about my religion. Even my friends say, and I can confirm to them, I learned my religion on a motorcycle with a headset from YouTube. I can tell you that, because that was my only spare time. I had no habit of reading books. 
First, I listened to talks about who our Prophet, peace be upon him, was and who the companions were. I started performing prayers after one and a half months. And later, after two months, I started praying five times a day. A year later, I started fasting. I understood what fasting is about. I started to practice everything I learned in my daily life, in every hour, slowly and patiently. That's how I found Islam. I feel so happy, fearless and strong since I become a Muslim. There is this energy in me that it provides. Do they teach children in Israel to be enemies of Islam? The most serious educator in Israel is the TV. I mean, TV, I can't watch an Israeli TV channel. If I watch it, I will grind my teeth with anger. So many lies and slanders. I've never seen something so blown out of proportion in this manner on any other channels. Because they invest so much to train your subconscious. Palestinian terrorist. There's no sentence without Palestine and terrorists. Tyrant Turkia. Cruel Turks. In recent years, there was no one standing against Israel and the tyranny of Israel other than Turkia. So on TV channels, they present Turkey and everything related to Turkey in such a setting. You think that anyone who talks goes to jail or anyone who talks gets shot. They try to instill people's subconscious with these ideas. The same goes for Islam. They feed hostility towards Islam. When a Palestinian Mujahid fights for his own country, he becomes a terrorist. But if you shoot and kill a child, it is Zionism. You saved your country. They feed these ideas to people. There is a war against Muslims and especially against Palestinian Muslims in the media arena. There are 10 commandments in the Torah. You shall not kill nor steal. You shall not deceive. You shall not commit adultery. Like these, there are 10 titles. They see these in Torah, but then they say, you shall not kill your brother in religion. Corruption. They're still corrupting. You shall not kill your brother in religion, but you can kill a Muslim. His blood is your right. This way, they feed these ideas to the people. What is Israel's view on Jerusalem? Why do they oppress Muslims so much? Jerusalem is Israel's number one concern. It is the number one desire and dream of Zionism. The meaning of the Wailing Wall is Jerusalem. That is why they named it like that. They can't enter it and it is under Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Temple of Suleiman. I mean, they are crying at that wall. Behind the wall, they cry for Jerusalem, Al-Aqsa. The Temple of Suleiman is under Al-Aqsa. In Zionism, according to their belief, one day they will destroy Al-Aqsa, unearth the Temple of Suleiman, and there is a Jewish cemetery on a mountain just opposite the Temple of Suleiman. The Jewish people will resurrect from the cemetery and reach the Temple of Suleiman and live in paradise here on earth. And Zionism will rule the world. This is their dream. This is their desire. To realize this, Jerusalem is significant. When they invade Jerusalem, which they do every day, Al-Aqsa, Jerusalem in its entirety, inshallah, this won't happen. If they knock down Al-Aqsa, this will be a sign that they rule the world and they will build the Temple of Suleiman as well. So Jerusalem is really significant for them. The place where their victory begins is Jerusalem. I understand that you experienced hardship practicing Islam in Israel. Then you moved to Turkey. How did you adapt to Turkey? Do you feel comfortable being a Muslim here? When I say I learned my religion from YouTube, I mean from scholars that I trust on YouTube from reliable sources. When I learned about Asr al sada and Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, Khadija, may Allah be pleased with her, and other companions. After learning about their lives, I expected a very high standard of Islam in Turkey. Of course, when I came here, I was shocked. I can say this as someone who has lived in Israel. I said to myself, these are, at least for some of them, not all. What is the difference between them and the Jews? I mean, there is Adhan, okay, I hear it too, but the mosques are empty. I walk on the streets, the cafes are full, just like in Israel. The bars are full, just like in Israel. I made a comparison. There's many things that I like, that I love, that I say, Alhamdulillah, you have lots of foundations, institutions that invite people to Allah and to remember Allah. These are blessings. In Israel, there are none. It is wonderful to be with people of the same religion, same traditions, same customs. I don't feel like a stranger here. I had no trouble learning the language. We've been watching Turkish TV since we were kids. But part of it disappointed me. Part of it comforted me. It hurts when people make fun of my prayers. It hurts that people experience difficulty in performing prayers. When I prayed in Israel, people from work used to say, you just perform your prayer. Others can deliver packages. Do not skip your prayers. But here people say, you pray too much, it's enough. And people say, I'm Muslim, but shut down these mosques, shut down these foundations, shut down these madrasas. Who are you? I'm a Muslim. 
Even the Jews don't talk like this. How can they? I don't understand. That's why I was shocked. Is there anything you would like to add before we wrap up? I want to say this. If we do not hold on to the Quran and the Sunnah, we will go after false books. We will stray away from the true path. If we find the true path, we will be saved, inshallah. We are delighted to have you here and towards eternity. We're pleased you were honest and sincere in your responses. What you told us, your sincerity, we're more than pleased to shoot a video with you here and towards eternity. May Allah bless you. I am glad too. May Allah bless you all. May Allah bless the work you do. Assalamu alaikum.